astronomers are lucky. When we're asked to engage an audience, we can show stunning images like this background here. This shows galaxies billions of light years away, beaming their rays towards us from a time when the universe was just a fraction of the age it is now. I, today, I'm going to talk to you about what lies at the centre of such galaxies, a supermassive black hole. The thing about black holes is they're kind of dark. Their very definition states that light cannot escape their immensely strong gravitational field. However, this gravity leads to gas spiralling into the black hole, and it forms a hot disk, like this artist's impression here, which emits bright light. My work involves studying these objects, which are called quasars. They are the most luminous type of objects in the universe. And in particular, I study the complicated feedback between them and their host galaxies. This feedback is carried out by something called a wind. We know these winds are there, which are, the winds are huge plumes of gas which rise from the disk and deposit material in the galaxy. And we know they're there because of the effect they have on the quasar's light. What I've shown here shows the wavelength of light and the brightness of the light at said, said wavelength. We see huge dips in intensity at certain wavelengths, which tell us that there is material moving towards us and blocking some of the light from the disk. It's called the Doppler effect, and it's the same technique that speed cameras use when they're trying to trap you when you're speeding, but this time it has slightly more positive implications. So what do we actually do, and why does it even matter? Well, I carry out huge simulations on the Iridus supercomputer up there, and I model these disk winds. I then compare these to data from the Hubble, from the most advanced telescopes in the world. Theory informs observations, observations inform theory. It's a symbiotic relationship, not that dissimilar from the relationship between the black hole and the galaxy itself. And it enables us to get a unique insight into how these objects co-evolve together. I've briefly explored a few te themes today. Themes like symbiosis, feedback, evolution. These are buzzwords throughout science. Understanding the cosmic versions of them is no less important than those we study in, say, climate science or in ecosystems. I hope I persuaded you that dissecting the growth of far-off galaxies is vitally important to understanding the very nature and origins of our own, our place within it, and the history of our vast cosmos. Thank you. <laughs>